Open source video generation models are getting increasingly powerful. For example, one 2.2 can directly output 720p videos, but it requires a relatively high VRAM threshold and quite a bit of generation time. If you first generate a video at a lower resolution, such as 480p, and then upscale it using a video upscaling model, not only can the results sometimes be even better, but you can also save a considerable amount of time in many cases. Today, I'd like to introduce Flash VSR, a highly practical video upscaling model. Published by the Open Imaging Lab research team, Flash VSR is the first diffusion-based, one-step streaming video super-resolution, VSR, framework featuring three core innovations. Put simply, it delivers fast speeds and excellent results. Currently, there are four plugins available for Flash VSR. First is our familiar friend Juan Video Wrapper. Its implementation does not include the Locality Constrained Sparse Attention, LCSA, module, which may cause noticeable quality degradation, texture aliasing, and visual artifacts at high resolutions. Nonetheless, this plugin is widely installed and the upscaling process requires no parameter adjustments, making it ideal for quick and simple runs. Next are Comfy UI Flash VSR underscore Ultra underscore Fast and Comfy UI Flash VSR, which use sparse Sage Attention and Sage Attention Optimization, respectively, rather than the officially recommended block sparse attention dependency. While they perform well in most scenarios, they don't fully unleash the model's capabilities. Comfy UI underscore Flash VSR offers the most complete implementation, best reproducing the official Flash VSR results. The only challenge is installing the block underscore sparse underscore attention dependency, which can be tricky. However, for me, what matters most is the upscaling quality, so this isn't a major obstacle. In this tutorial video, I'll first walk you through installing and using the hardcore Comfy UI underscore Flash VSR plugin to experience the full potential of the Flash VSR model. Then I'll demonstrate one video wrapper to show how far the simplest approach can go. Finally, I'll compare it to another contender in the field, SeedVR2, and analyze their respective strengths and weaknesses. Launch Comfy UI. As usual, we install plugins via Comfy UI Manager. Search for FlashSir to see three results, all the plugins mentioned earlier. Click Install on the first entry. Wait for the installation to complete, then click the pop up to restart Comfy UI. The plugin is now ready. To unlock the full capabilities of the plugin, we need to install the Block Sparse Attention Dependency Library. First, stop the currently running instance of Comfy UI. This library is not common and lacks pre-compiled WIL files for various platforms. The plugin author provides WIL files for Python 3.11, Torch 2.8 plus CU128, but it's unclear which GPUs are supported. Based on my previously shared integration package, I've locally compiled a WIL file for Python 3.12, Torch 2.8 plus CU128, which theoretically supports 30, 40, and 50 series NVIDIA GPUs. If your environment differs, you can compile it yourself, just make sure your Python and PyTorch versions match those in your Comfy UI environment. Typically, compiling for a specific GPU type takes no more than 1 to 2 hours. Copy the wheel file to your Comfy UI root directory and open PowerShell. Use the Python from Python underscore embedded and pip to install the wheel file, that's all there is to it. Restart Comfy UI. You should see a confirmation in the logs indicating the plugin is now fully functional. In Comfy UI, create a blank workflow. Add the core sampling node for Flash VSR. Next, add its model loading node. Note that several model files are involved, pay close attention to this. The dip file, this is the Flash VSR model. After downloading, you can rename it, but make sure the file name contains DMD so the plugin can recognize it. Proj underscore point, low quality projection model. EMB underscore point, embedding vector for positive prompts. V, select the VAE from one 2.1. TCD underscore encoder, miniature conditional decoder. If selected, the plugin is tiny mode, otherwise it's full mode. The tiny underscore long option enables tiny long mode. Decode underscore V, freely choose a special VAE for different effects. For example, light X2 V VAE. Version, model version, we use 1.1. Except for the VAE file which goes in the VAE folder, all other model files should be placed in the model slash flash VSR directory. Add a video loading node. 
For demonstration, let's process just 81 frames. The final video size generated by the sampling node is calculated by multiplying width and height by the upscale factor named scale. Typically, I add a get image size node to feed width and height to the sampling node. Since the scale factor only accepts positive integers, I also add an upscale image node, allowing flexible generation of various upscale multiples, e.g. 0.75 times 4 equals 3 times. For image downscaling, it's more stable to use area or bicubic algorithms. Finally, add a combined video node to compose images into a video, using the same settings as the original video. The workflow is now complete. If your source video has audio, you can pass it along. However, be aware, if the original video has no audio and you connect this node, it will trigger a node error. Click Run. In the command line you'll see it's operating in full mode. We've taken an 81 frame for 80 by 832 video and upscaled it 2x in 4 minutes. Recording locally consumed some VRAM, normally, it would take only 1 minute. The results are very stable, with no flickering and very high quality. The finished video size is 896 times 1664. That's because the workflow processes input images to ensure their dimensions are multiples of 128, 480 becomes 448, and 448 times 2 is equal to 896. Not only dimensions, but frame count is also aligned similarly. Add a preview image node and run it. You'll get all images before they're merged into a video. Notice there are only 77 images, for fewer than the original 81. Unlike the common 8n plus 1 framing, Flash VSR uses 8n plus 5. Let's switch to a 77 frame video input, it is 8 times 9 plus 5, run again. After patiently waiting, the video quality is just as good. Previewing the images, we see all 77 are present with none missing. To clarify which frames were dropped when converting 81 input frames to 77 output frames, let's number each frame. Create a blank workflow. Add a node from MIA nodes to watermark images with frame numbers. Load the input video and merge video node. Increase the font size to 5. Click Run. The process is quick. Within about 2 seconds, whoops, the numbers are a bit too big. Change it to 2 and run again. Perfect. Back in the Flash VSR workflow, swap in the numbered video as the input. First, run 77 frames. The results are in. Previewing the images shows every frame is accounted for, with clear numbering. If you input 45 frames, you'll get 45 processed images, no problem. Switch back to 81 frames and run. Now, let's resolve the earlier question. Which 4 frames are lost when going from 81 to 77 frames? The result is clear, the last image is number 77, so the final 4 frames have been trimmed. Now that we've understood this logic, let's revert the input video to the version without watermarks. Let's review the parameters in the sampling node that haven't been mentioned yet. The attention control parameters, kv underscore ratio, local underscore range, sparse underscore ratio, I won't go into detail. Generally, the higher the KV underscore ratio, the better the quality and stability, but VRAM demand also increases. The plugin author suggests a local underscore range of 7 yields the sharpest images, while a value of 11 is more stable. Keep the step count and guidance strength CFG at 1. Split underscore number is the number of segments. It determines the frame block size processed at a time during decoding, which will affect peak VRAM usage. Full underscore filed means tile decoding, reducing the likelihood of OOM errors. Color correction can adjust the colors in the output video. Since the model may introduce high contrast coloration when generating high resolution results, this can unintentionally alter the color of the input video. If you want to enable color correction, it's recommended to set the fix underscore method below to wavelet. Personally, I prefer to enable color correction, but I'll disable it now to show you the difference. Let me switch to a video with a Hong Kong style for a more obvious comparison. I'll process just 45 frames, first with color correction off, then with it on. You can see the overall brightness and darkness differ significantly. The version with color correction is much more faithful to the original video. The official documentation claims this mode excels at 4x rather than 2x upscaling, 
similar to previous image upscaling models like 4x UltraSharp. Should we downscale first to 0.5x and then upscale by 4x to achieve a final 2x effect? Let's give it a try. Switching back to the clip with the lady in white, open the upscaling node as previously discussed, use the area algorithm for downscaling first. Next, set the sampling node scale to 4, and click Run. After comparing the result to directly upscaling by 2x, the difference isn't very noticeable, but given the official recommendation, let's stick with this method. So far, all the demos have used Flash VSR's full mode, aimed at delivering the highest quality output. The model and plugin also support a lightweight tiny mode, which offers faster speed and lower resource consumption at the cost of some detail. How do you switch modes? In the model loading node, simply select tcdcoder.ckpt as the tcd underscore encoder model file. The official claim is that this delivers seven times faster decoding. Nothing else needs changing, just click run. In the log, you'll see the current mode is tiny. Wait a moment for the results. Comparing with full mode, it's hard to spot a difference in this video. Both modes perform excellently. You can default to tiny mode, and if you're dissatisfied, especially with facial detail or sharpness, switch to full mode. To further reduce OOM risk during long video upscaling, a tiny long mode is introduced, based on tiny mode. It utilizes techniques like tiling, batch processing, and model unloading to significantly lower VRAM demands. Usage is simple. Ensure TCD underscore encoder is loaded and then enable the tiny underscore long option. Click run, check the log, and you'll see the current mode is tiny long. Once processing is complete, I put the results from all three modes side by side. In theory, full mode delivers the best quality, tiny is the fastest, and tiny long has the lowest VRAM requirement, though it may be the slowest. If you've used Seed VR2 before, you'll know that it's not just for video upscaling, you can also upscale images. The Flash VSR plugin author added support for single image super resolution to meet user requests. You can input a single image, and by default, it outputs in one second video. I'll swap the video input node for an image, select a 600 by 500 portrait, switch back to full mode, and click run. It's done, and we get a video, playing it, there's almost no visual change. Which frame should you use? I'll add additional nodes to extract the first, index, 1, and last, index, minus 1, frames. Then I'll add a digital watermark to the video and set up image comparison. Running the comparison node, you'll see the first and last frames are nearly identical, either one is fine. Bringing in the original image for comparison, the upscaled version is noticeably sharper, especially in the eyes and hair, though the position is slightly shifted. That's because our input image size is 600 times 500, which isn't divisible by 128 so the image was center cropped. Now let's try a larger 1024 by 1024 image with text. I'll downscale it to 0.5x and then upscale to 4x, keeping the rest of the nodes unchanged, and hit run. Reviewing the result, because this image is 1024 times 1024, which is a multiple of 128, there's no positional offset. For text and existing content, clarity greatly improves after upscaling. From my perspective, while the effect is good, using Flash VSR for image-only upscaling feels inefficient. It's designed to use context between frames for smoother motion, which is wasted with single image input. The process is also time-consuming and memory-intensive. If your goal is simply to upscale videos quickly without pushing Flash VSR to its highest quality, one Video Wrapper is an excellent alternative. This popular plugin supports various video generation models, we've demonstrated it in One Animate videos as well. Installation is easy, search for One Video Wrapper in Manager and install or update with one click. Flash VSR integration in this plugin is straightforward. Load the workflow. Looking at the model loading section, in Extra Model, select LQ underscore proj, for VAE, use TC Decoder. 
The main model is Flash VSR's DMD model, so this is tiny mode. Note that one video wrapper supports models in SafeTensor's format, while the Comfy UI underscore Flash VSR plugin only accepts CKPT format and uses different file locations. Leave a positive prompt as is. This is the prompt used to train Flash VSR and yields better results. I select a 1280 by 720 video in the video loading node and set the dimension change node to upscale to 1.5 times open parenthesis 1920 times 1080 close parenthesis. The sampler node is the regular one video sampler, no real parameters to adjust, then click run. Oops, error. That's because 1080 isn't divisible by 16. Unlike Flash VSR, which automatically center crops input videos, in this workflow, you need to crop manually. Go back to the image size modification node, change divided underscore by to 16 to ensure the output width and height are divisible by 16. Try running again, another error, OOM. This is common in video upscaling workflows, but after OOM, Comfy UI auto unloads VRAM data, so just retry running. After waiting a bit over 3 minutes, the result is done, the default workflow produces a comparison video. Although I'm satisfied with the result, this implementation is basic, consumes a lot of VRAM, and is known to produce artifacts at high resolutions. If you don't want to, or can't, install block sparse attention and typically just upscale short 480p videos to 960p or 1080p, and have enough VRAM to avoid OOM, this simple approach is perfectly acceptable. Now let's look at Seed VR2, which I've used frequently for video upscaling. I use the Seed VR2 underscore video upscaler plugin, which receives frequent updates. Load the workflow, which is straightforward, select the 3BFP8 model, set the target resolution at the upscaling node, I set it to 896 to match the previous Flash VSR size. Batch underscore size is analogous to context window, the larger it is, the more consistent the results, but it demands more VRAM. I leave it at 5. For color fix, enable wavelet mode. Click run, 45 frames take 90 seconds in total. Here's the final effect. I think, although theoretically Flash VSR is faster, Seed VR 2 offers a range of quantized models with lower requirements, so it can actually be quicker in practice. In terms of results, Seed VR 2 excels at restoration, filling in image detail, and offering better single frame quality, while Flash VSR emphasizes coherence between frames, making video enlargement more stable. That concludes the demonstrations. In summary, Flash VSR is a highly recommended video upscaling model. Compared to Seed VR 2, its output almost never exhibits flickering, so I tend to prefer using it. If you prioritize quality and need to generate videos with resolutions above 2K or extra long durations, it's best to use the full-featured Comfy UI underscore Flash VSR. For those using my V7 integration pack, Python 3.12, Torch 2.8 plus CU128, you can download the wheel file I've compiled. If your goal is simply to upscale a 480p video by 2x, then the straightforward process offered by One Video Wrapper is a good choice. That wraps up today's video. If you found this content helpful, please consider liking, commenting, or sharing. Thank you. All the models, workflows, and plugins mentioned in the video are listed in the description, so feel free to download them if you're interested. See you next time.